葉もお聞きください The plant managers who are not board members have no access to the company's performance results. They assume that all they need to do is produce as much as instructive as long as it's at the lowest cost. In that sense, I believe there are many plant managers nationwide who are not doing what they really should be doing. This will never make a company profitable. If you want to be profitable, you need to be able to discern if your plant is really making money or not. In other words, if they don't know how they are contributing to the overall performance or operations, they often end up producing mindlessly. This makes a company poor. Unfortunately, many people don't understand this, not only in Japan, but also in America. A long time ago, when I went to America, I heard from a CEO of a publishing company or someone working on productivity. That there was an Israeli physicist named Goldratt. Who had created a system called OPT. This method was quietly making waves in many major American companies. He told me that its philosophy was very similar to what we call the Toyota production system. So I was asked to discuss this with him. When I got there, I think it was a Saturday afternoon. I was able to have a talk with this physicist, Dr. Goldratt. He said that managers in America also believe that raising operating rates is good, but this results in making more than necessary. He said that most managers had no idea how these excessive inventories are actually oppressing their businesses. And so he was focusing on mentoring these people. He also said that Israel was a small country, so even though he had created a great production system, it wouldn't be utilized much. That's why he went to America to mentor major companies. I asked him if he could convince these companies in theoretical terms, since they were all scholars. And he said that he could. So I encouraged him to try that approach more fully. Since I cannot compete with a scholar in theory, I replied vaguely with something like if you can really do that, and if you also run some companies in America, you'll surely be able to make the whole country richer. He continued to say that. Producing in large batches means a reduction in operational costs and an increase in inventory, and so the optimal point of balance could be found. He said, as a scholar, he could theoretically identify the most appropriate level of inventory. We believe that the core of IE to make money. Is producing only the amount you sell when you need. But with this approach, production costs inevitably go up. The main objective of the Toyota production system is to study how to prevent cost increases and how to lower manufacturing costs. But people mistakenly think that the Toyota production system. 
is simply about using kambam or just about reducing inventory. Because it's difficult to determine the optimum quantity, we continue to study how much we can in reduce inventory by while maintaining a reasonable flow of production. In other words, the Toyota production system, or Kanban, is based on identifying the optimum quantity. If a company can easily reduce inventory using the Kanban, they must have already had too much of it. If that's the case, they should be able to reduce inventory even without using the Kanban. These people might say, we were able to reduce the amount of inventory by half using the Kanban. But I would say to that, there is still half left. They might have a great deal of surplus inventory, but they are proud of reducing just half of it. This is not the Toyota production system way. The essence of the Toyota production system is found in saying, can we realistically reduce one more? And then after that, one more? When we study the way we work, there is an endless cycle of improvement. Thus, in the Toyota production system, there will never be a point that cannot be improved upon further. We must continue to research this until the end.